Hey everybody, it's your boy Serge Dragon, and welcome back to another edition of the Heavens Monsters Podcast. With me today is Tim Money. If you smell what the lion is cooking. And we're doing a review on Monday Night Raw with Chris Petrie. Oh, sweet. And Mike Henry. If you're ready for an episode of the Heavens Monsters Podcast, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I said, if you're ready for an episode of the Heavens Monsters Podcast, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's get down to business, shall we? Yep. Monday Night Raw on September 28th. 28th. And today's the 30th, last day of September. We've been here for six years, bro. We've been working here for six years. Let's go. So, we start the night with Drew McIntyre coming out with all these uh, legends who participated and showed up in their ambulance match between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. So he's giving thanks to all of them and saying that it's good that they got their payback. And then Randy Orton on the teleprompter or Teletron, Megatron, whatever you want to call it. The, the Titantron. Titantron. He goes and says that he is far from done with Drew McIntyre in the WWE Championship. And to mark his words. And he walks out of the building with his briefcase. Suitcase. Or whatever you want to call it. Or you can call it his luggage. Yep. After which, Drew McIntyre says he wants competition, even though he's supposed to be not medically cleared. He says, you know what? I want to give an opportunity to somebody who hasn't fought me. So who's going to take up this open challenge Tonight. Your thoughts, T Money? Mm. The whole Randy Orton thing? Oh. Well, Randy Orton is hungry. He wants to be champion again. And Drew McIntyre says that he's never he's not gonna let that happen. He's not gonna lose his title. Fourteen times. Mm-hmm. Randy Orton, he's, he's gonna have something up his sleeve. He's gonna have something up his sleeve out of so I can think I'm thinking. But you know, we'll wait till later on see what he has up his sleeve. Mikey? I believe Orton. Orton got what he deserved. And now he wants to interrupt Drew McIntyre and the rest of the legends? What a bastard. You, Chris? Drew McIntyre is waiting for, waiting for competition. You like the Work for the legends. Let's see if someone step up or face to a mega tire for the title. Mm-hmm. Next. Raw Women's Champion Oscar versus Zelina Vega in a, in a rematch for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. From Class of Champions. So, which case, this is perfect. Zelina Vega gets another opportunity to try and win the title due to the fact that she cheap shotted Asuka after losing. Asuka takes offense to that and gets an opportunity to prove to her once again that she is not ready for Asuka. And she wasn't. Because she beat her again with a submission hold. And Zelina Vega was very, how you say, distraught. Mm hmm. And we'll save what happened after that in just a bit. So get your two cents. Uh, Selena Vega is not going to quit. Oscar is the champion. So Selena Vega, go back to the line and, wait and get someone else a chance. Mm. You, Mikey? I'm not. Well, I'm sorry. Before, before, my, before that. I want to say, don't get, if Shark comes back, please don't let Shark get another chance. Mm. Go ahead, Mike. Like I said, Zelina had another chance at Oscar. She failed again. <laughs> you, Chris? Selena Vega is a loser. She can't beat Oscar at all. After that match, after we come from commercial break, we would have Andrade come out and actually start talking trash, saying that 
to her words that she the on the Andrade as well as Angel Garza needed her, but they uh, she needed them, and he's throwing her out, and she's being literally walking the stage of shame because she, she's hearing him talking smack, and she's just walking around just you know wanting to cry. So Andrade is mad, and he's saying that he's uh, upset with what happened with uh, Class of Champions, and that he's, I think he said that he's done with Angel Garza. Am I correct or no? What? Andrade is done with Angel Garza. I think he, he, wants, he wants to get back in a singles competition. Well, he definitely got that when he made an open challenge to anybody who's wanted a piece. Because he feel like, because you, he feel like uh, they were, mm-hmm. We're just uh not not in his level. Uh well you know Angel Garza is not in his level. He felt the same way just like uh in the way. Well <laughs> his level. Funny you should say that, cause the limitless one would accept his open challenge and rack him. No, when I say level, I'm saying that he's not he's in uh Andrade is saying that he's better than Angel Garza. Mm hmm Angel Garza is not Or anyone in the tag division. Yeah. Angel Garza it's not at his le- level. Well, he got whooped by somebody higher than his level. No, no, he, no. Well, not higher. Who can match up to his level? Match? He fucking spirit bombed the lady's ass out. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying match <laughs> who, can, who can beat him and yeah. beat him. That's what I'm saying. Also, on commentary, it was mentioning to uh, Samoa Joe saying that he's, uh, are you happy to see two former NXT champions in the ring right now fighting? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, any a- anything else you want to add to that? Mm. Uh, the Angel Garza thing. And Keith Lee. Uh, uh, and Keith Lee. Uh, and Keith, uh, Andrade and Keith Lee. Andrade got smashed by Keith Lee. The limitless man. Keith Lee said, You just got, uh, beat. You just got beat. Uh huh. I'm sure Andrade is going to have something to say about that next Monday. Mm. You, Mikey? First, Andrade comes out, gets the face of his former manager, Selena, after she failed to beat Oscar. That's number one. And number two, my teammate just said, Andrade got dropped by the Legion fooled himself, Keith Lee, bask in Keith's glory, y'all. You, Chris? Yeah, I try to call Talia Vega and uh, Angel Garza the weak link. He called both of them the weak link. And then he made a challenge to uh, everyone and Keith Spirit bombs are dry day. Bashing and glory deeply. Next, we have a segment where our truth is tricked into believing that Akira Dezawa is really dead. Akira Dezawa makes his return and becoming a. I'm, I'm confused here. This is the part I forgot. Is he a five or seven time? 24-7 champion. Akira is out. I'll say probably five. All right. Mm-hmm. That's not right. Because I'm the yeah, men, same time. That's what I'm thinking. Champion. And it, right after that, the per, the ninja who was presenting a black belt that was the distraction for him was actually Drew Gulak. I'm like, he's on SmackDown. What is he doing here? Apparently, they were announcing that he's now a member on Monday Night Raw due to the draft. I'm like, what? what wait, what? I thought they were going to do scramble everybody all at once, so they're trading drafting. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you think about it. The uh, like I told you, the the twenty four seven title cannot go to SmackDown. Yep. Due to the fact that Drew Gulak was already previously a one time twenty four seven champion because of the fact of class of champions, now he's a two time because now a forty one time. Two uh, 24-7 champion is R-Truth getting back his baby after playing a game, uh, multiple games of chess with his imaginary friend, Little Jimmy. So, 
Damn. Three title changes in one night for the 24-7 championship. Your thoughts? Uh, R-Troop, uh, Drew Gulak, and Kirito Zawa. Okay. I uh, I'll say, I like, I think Kirito Zawa did better, he did a good job, but uh, R-Troop is better, so I go with R-Troop. He did a good job. Mm. You, Mikey? r is still the master of 24-7 champion. I got to say about this when you get to it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Mike. As I said, our truth is the master of 24 7 champion now. Oh, yeah. 41 times. 41 times. Where is it? He would have had our time if he was, if he was going for a few, if a uh, giant be on. Uh, you think about it, he would have, our truth would have had our time if he, if, uh, if Mark Henry won the title or Cam Bishop. Oh, yeah. Or, or Braun Strowman. Yeah. You, Chris? Not sure. I think that's the title back using John Cena's move, the AA, to pick up the big. No, this was in the back. This was in the back. This wasn't in the ring. Yeah. Chris is getting mixed up. Because I guess we can talk about it. Because after that little scramble, there would be a triple threat match made in the middle of the ring for the 24-7 championship. In which case, it was a scramble between Drew Gulak, Akira Dezawa, and R-Truth. And R-Truth would get the win. Running the hell out of there with, as Chris said, with uh, John Cena's AA attitude adjustment move. That's what you're talking about, Chris? You skipped ahead. You got your, uh, your parts of the show messed up. Mikey, you get your two cents on that. Well, Drew, well, Drew Gulak and Akira Dazao failed to get their hands on 24 7 title. They didn't get the job done. Again. And you? Our true ticket. And I know you want to mention this next segment. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. It's your boy. All right, let me go ahead and read it. <laughs> okay, Seth Rollins revealed uh, a lead Mysterio and the Murphy's secret uh, oh, test messages. It's a special edition of Jerry the King Lawler's King's Court. He was supposed to talk about what King's was... Court. This is like a, like, a, like a different kind of uh, show he's doing. Because you don't see... Well, what's it called? Uh... I guess you call it the Ray Mysterio family, uh. No, it says it right there. King's Court. But I'm saying, I guess it, it's. To just, update the Universal, the WWE Universe on where they stand. I'm saying, you don't have. It was literally from, uh, it was even on a card. Yeah, I'm saying that you don't have. King's Court with the Ray Mysterio, with the Mysterio family. Yeah, you don't have the, the, the whole uh, furniture, I'm saying. Yeah, but it's a King Court. Nonetheless. Mm. Not the old school, what you would prefer. Yeah. But it's King Court. Okay. Regardless. That's what I'm trying to point out. So, King's Court with uh, the Mysterio family, in which they're addressing the fact that what's going on with uh, uh, Seth Rollins and his ad- allegations with the daughter as well as the son. So, they're tra- uh, saying that they're going to stand together, and the fact that the daughter has her uh, uh, two cents saying that, yes, she doesn't know how things are done in the ring, but at the end of the day, she is 19 years old, so she can make her own choices. She doesn't mention the fact that she can also make her own mistakes. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, ignorance is bliss in the youth. Uh, we were like that. Yeah, we're, but in real life, can, she can't mm. do that, though. Mm. Although, thanks to Seth Rollins, who invaded his disciples' pro- privacy by grabbing his phone without his knowledge and going on to the, uh, one of the social medias that he had. I don't know which one. Twitter or Instagram. And it was a private conversation on social media between the two. He's just checking up on her. And it's being widespread that they actually have some sort of relationship. I think it was Instagram. Yeah, I've never seen something like that. Yeah, and both are claiming that it's nothing. It's nothing. Both uh, Mysterio's daughter and Murphy. 
They're both saying, it's not what you think. She's saying he's uh, he's not like Seth. He's not like Seth. But it escalates very bad in the back because you would think he was about to just kick Seth Rollins' ass right there, B Buddy Murphy, and he gets jumped by Dominic Mysterio, and later on we get a match much later. So what are your thoughts on that? Aaliyah did something really stupid to mess up her, her family's legacy. Uh. And, uh, I'm on the, the, the side, like I told y'all, that she's gonna turn on, she turned on her family. And, like, I'm on the side of Dominic that what she did was really stupid. Accepting, uh, messages from him? Yes. She, if she says she's 18, I mean, uh, 19, she can make her own damn decision. Yeah, but if you turn on your family, that, that is a problem. The question, has she turned? No, that's what they said. I that's know, right? That's what they say, but there's not a guarantee that she's turned. Oh, it's confirmed. Mm. That she turned on her family. Uh, I don't know. Mikey, what is your two cents? Leave the money that Messiah. Up to his own bag of tricks. Again. Again and again. Mm. You, Chris? Who sell well at them? Yes. You can't go, go around and grab someone's phone and in a very the business of Murphy and Aaliyah. Hey, y'all remember Eddie Griffith just like that before Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, we remember that. Yeah. That was more of a custody thing, though. Yeah. And plus, no, he, he revealed a secret to the Rumors to a family that the son didn't, I mean, didn't know. Yeah, yeah, no, we know. We know. In which case, uh, what's next? The raw debut of Mandy Rose. In a tag team match, and her partner was is Dana Brooke versus Natalia and Lana. Yeah, I gotta ask this: What the hell is Natalia and Lana sniffing, or eating, or smoking? What the fuck? They're at, they're being told they're be, not being told they're. In the middle of the ring, telling people that they demand that Shayna Baszler, as well as Nia Jax, be stripped of the tag team women's championships and just handed them the titles because that they're most popular. I was like, oh, shit. I know, right? What, what the fuck? Well, hey, well, well, that, uh, well, Natalia, she... Is saying it in her her own words that she deserves that that those bus because she is the veteran of the, the boat. The, not, the well, you call best it, of, uh, well, you call of it, all well, time. Well, not the boat, but you call it the. That's what Lana's called it. The boat. <laughs> well, let's put. I would say this probably like the the ship. No, no, it's an Instagram like goat, greatest of all time. Yeah. B best of all time. Yeah. Or you call it the best in the world that. Uh, hold on, yeah. best in the world. Oh, that's a whole different. <laughs> uh, well, uh, how you pronounce that? Ja or ga? Ja, uh, ja, I can't pronounce or, it. Or you call it female essence execution. Uh -huh. Well, she's saying in her own words that she is, deserves a best because she's been in the day oh, longer than them. It, it, instead of taking the I, you just take away the I is GTW. Greatest in the world. Yeah. GTW. There you go. That works. Well, she's saying that she deserves those tag team belts because she is the only vet, uh, veteran, veteran in the, in the WWE. And plus, she's been in the uh, longer than those other women. Yeah. I got to get my two cents on this. Uh, since teaming up with Lana and going by social media, she is not the heart, night heart that we remember that supposedly grew up in one of the most cruelest uh, training camps. That's the Night Heart Dungeon. Yeah. Like, she's gotten soft. The Heart Dungeon. The Heart Dungeon. Thank you. She's gotten soft thanks to social media. She's gotten pampered. She's like a like legally blonde thing. But you know what the Heart Dungeon is, right? Yeah. It's a family's basement. Yep. Training ground. Mm. So, 
Adam Pierce would come out and state that championship titles need to be earned, not given. In which case, he introduces, like you said, the debut of the draft that we thought was just Mandy Rose. Nope, we get Daniel Brooke too. So I'm like, who the hell do they got left in SmackDown? Like, it's, it's dwindling. The numbers are dwindling. Like, are we getting somebody from Monday Night Raw to SmackDown or what? And Mandy Rose came out wearing Trish Stratus' outfit from 20 years ago. Hey. And Trish Stratus uh, comment on, on Instagram and Twitter that she loved that outfit that Mandy Rose was wearing. Pay yeah. tribute to the, the legendary Duddy superstar. Yep, and they won the match. Yep. Hello? Oh, oh. Mikey! Oh, oh. I don't know what to tell you, a lot of bickering. But ladies and gentlemen, it's Mandy Night Raw. Yeah. Okay, hold up. I gotta get the info here, because he's leaving. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Chris, get your take on Lana and Natalia versus Mandy Rose and Daniel Brooke. Later, Timon. Hey. First of all, Natalia and Lana do not deserve the tag team belts until they didn't win the match at all. And secondly, Mandy Rose make, made her debut at uh, Dana Brooke and beat Natalia and Lana for their debut match. Ooh, yeah. Or just be like, ooh, yeah. I bet he is. Okay, Mikey, what's next? Go ahead. Hmm. Woo! Kevin Owens versus Alistair Black. It'd be a one-on-one -on -one match, knowing the fact that these two still have Vendetta, we would actually see the eye. The damaged eye, oh damn, I got red vessels when I say that, of uh, Alistair Black. Ultimately, though, uh, I'm trying to remember who won the match. Was it Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens by DQ. Yeah, Kevin Owens won by DQ. Oh, yeah, because of the fact that the referee got too damn close and got elbow shot for his troubles. He threw the match. As a disqualification for uh, that elbow shot. And then uh, Kevin Owens stunners him with an exclamation point. And then walks onto the stage and says, I'm just going to keep fighting. You, you just keep being a little bitch. I'm like, ooh. -hoo. Kevin Owens said that. Ooh. Dang. What are your thoughts, Mikey? Well... Kevin Owens is now 2-0 and against Alistair Black. And now something tells me that Kevin Owens could be climbing his way back where he started as a prize fighter. It's WWE title. If the championship were not attracted. What'd you say, Chris? I said if the title the top championship will not be will be draft will be drafted if that happens. Ooh. What's next? We talked about our two versus Akira Tazawa and Zuku Yep. Next after that. 
Oh, this is going not going to like this one. Dominic versus Buddy Murphy. Which case, if I remember correctly, uh, Buddy Murphy won that Murphy. one thing. Huh? Yeah, thanks to Dominic's sister, Aaliyah. Yeah, she kept trying to defend him and saying, this is enough, this is enough. I'm thinking it was a regular match. They had weapons in there. What the hell? Was it a street fight or something? No DQ? It's just a regular match. Then what the fuck with the Kendall Six and Chairs in there involved? Ref didn't throw the match. Uh, Makes no sense. Dominic, Dominic was angry. Buddy Murphy. Yeah, he was wanting to kill him. You ain't right. And then she go, uh, uh, Dominic then says, you know what? Dad was right. You are ignorant. And she get, it slaps him for trouble. Woo! Go ahead, Mikey. Oh my gosh. Once again, I blame that bastard Seth freaking Rollins. Unbelievable. You, Chris? Stereo family is being disarrayed because of Seth. Oh yeah. What's next, Mikey? Six six man tag team showdown. Apollo's team versus the Hurt Business. Yeah, this kind of started because uh, Mustafa Ali was coming out of the Hurt Business locker room, like. Why was he in there? And I want to point out another thing. Cedric Alexander was nowhere to be found throughout the whole show. Ain't that trippy? Must be the COVID thing. They said they put him in the boot camp. Her business boot camp. That's what MVP said. Oh. Okay. That's just a funny way of saying he's out sick. <laughs> so these six men would end ultimately be in the match. And I'm trying to remember who got pinned. Because I know. MVP. Yeah, MVP got pinned. Thank you. By Mustafa Ali. Yeah, 450 splash. Thanks to his backup and Apollo Cruz and Ricochet taking out uh, Selton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley outside. So it was good for the baby faces. But here's another thing. Besides Cedric Alexander, we didn't see any of Retribution. We saw that the music was playing and the lights went out in the middle of the match before commercial break. And after commercial break, nothing. Like, what the hell? This is a no-show of retribution this week. Probably due to COVID. What is your think? Uh, what do you think uh, take that, Mikey? Uh, well, like I said, the Hurt Business got what they deserved as number one. And number two, <laughs> thank goodness that retribution <laughs> thing come out here and just, you know, terrorize this place. Yep. You, Chris? No They definitely didn't like that. They were picking on somebody. T they were picking on everybody. They were picking on the guy who was just trying to eat his food. They took his food. I'm like, hell no. You uh -uh. Nobody taking my damn food. If I put it on the plate, I plan on eating it. They taking my damn food. Hell no. They just bullied. And then they picked on a janitor. 
threw a water bottle at him and said, pick that up, boss. I'm like, uh-uh. Funny thing, we, uh, we'll get back to that. So, what's next on the agenda, Mikey? And finally, the wrap-up Monday Night Raw. Drew McIntyre versus the returning, the glorious Robert Roode. Glorious you! Because we were hearing that from back. Dolph Ziggler was putting a, a pitching idea for Adam Pearce, and he says, man, you already know you got a shot. Multiple times. I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about somebody else. I'm like, oh, we're not talking about you? Okay, you got my attention. Let's go. Yep. He did mention when he came to Monday Night Raw when uh, they drafted AJ Styles, two-for-one deal, it was his tag team partner, Robert Roode. So now we know for sure that we have a tag team, a new tag team, or previous on SmackDown, now on Raw, with Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. And plus, I want to also point out, this is the main event. This is the last match of the night, right, Mikey? It was the last match before we get to this Legends thing, but keep yeah. on talking. Where the hell is Raw Underground? I have no idea. They just probably took the night off. A lot of people did. You want to get right down to it? Damn. Anybody else notice it? Or is it just me? Shit. Man. So, pointing that out, I just wanted to point that. And I did. Gave my two cents on that. So, with Robert Roode now definitely coming back, he, woo, damn, he gave uh, Drew McIntyre a run for his money. And Dolph Ziggler tried to interfere multiple times, almost got disqualified, but he didn't do that for his buddy because the title was on the line. This was a WWE championship match. Make no mistake about it. If the champion uh, lost by... Disqualification or count out, the title would not change. So they knew that and they did not want to do that. But it was to no avail. Robert Roode would definitely hit him as hard as he could with all of his hits and tricks, but it wasn't enough to keep the Scottish psychopath down. In which case, Drew McIntyre hit him with the Claymore kick. Woo! Claymore! Bam! And that's it. That's all she wrote. Drew McIntyre walks out as WWE champion once again. Your thoughts, Mikey? Drew McIntyre is still WWE champion, Mr. Claymore Country. You, Chris? Robert Rude had tried his best, but it wasn't enough. So, my guess. Sorry, we'll still be for a long time. Yep. Before we get to the next part, let's mention the fact that while they were waiting on this to see who would be the open uh, accepting the open challenge, the legends would be in the legends lounge office uh, area, their own locker room, playing poker. In which case, the winner of that poker match was Ric Flair on multiple occasions. And they were just enjoying themselves, reminiscing of good old days. Might as well be Table for Four, a little special of Table for Three on WWE Network. Go check that out. They, 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 good conversations if you like some history lessons. In which case, what comes about at the end, that same janitor we saw earlier with uh, the Hurt Business throwing a water bottle and that was none other than Randy Orton. What the? <laughs> yeah, who the hell has a janitor wearing a mask and hood? I mean, COVID-19, I get it, but what the fuck was the hood for? It, I, never mind. Just answer my own question in my head. To conceal him, his identity. Eh. Did it well enough, nobody gave a shit. And he goes into the locker room where it says Legends Lounge. 
And he puts on these funny looking things over his head. And we already figured if you click and you know, it's night vision goggles. He goes in there with a steel chair. They see him. They don't jump immediately. They're just dumbfounded as the, what the, Randy. He turns off the switch and all you hear is whack, 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 whack. Grunting, screaming. I don't hear a lot of screaming. I hear a bam, 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 bam. Uh, oh, oh, oh. And when the time the lights turn back on, all of them are just laid out. He comes back out, puts his mask on, put his hood on, grabs the cart for the cleaning of restrooms, and everybody storms in, referees, officials, all that, wondering, and he just points at the door, say, uh, making it look like he's just one of the workers. And he makes a clean getaway. And then that's the end of the show. Like, damn. What are your two cents on that, Mikey? Son of a bitch. You, Chris? Anything else, Mikey? Uh, one of them is they show the promo of Bianca Belair, the fastest of WWE. Anything else? No. Oh, have you, have, you, have you watched Raw Talk yet or no? Yes. I wanted to mention that after everything was uh, lined up on Monday Night Raw. So, besides the Street Profits coming in while they were gambling, that was nice of them. So, anything else, Mikey? No, that'll be it. Let's just go to Raw Talk. All right. First, we got to mention the fact that, uh, if I remember correctly, the first one that came up was Murphy, right? It was, we had Murphy, followed by Dana and Mandy, followed by Mustafa Ali. There you go. In which case, we would have Mur- uh, Mur- uh, Mur- uh, but uh, Murphy just, just straight up dodging questions here. Saying that he believes in Seth despite the fact that they're button heads and they're going to have words, they said. So let's, uh, let, we'll see about that. After that, Mandy and Daniel Brooke We're talking about their tag team and that they know that Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot have a number one's contendership. They got a shot at the titles and they're saying that whoever comes out on that, they'll be waiting. Finally, we have Mustafa Ali mentioning that he's got his boys back. He's not going to take none of the hurt business crap. He didn't mention anything about retribution, to my knowledge, did he? Yeah. Okay, who cares? But Bert, but Mustafa Ali came out and got the job done. Yep, and he mentioned uh, he was mentioning Mustafa, and uh, the fact he had to bring up that it hit social media that Mustafa Ali was supposed to play Aladdin in the live action Disney film. <laughs> Missed oh, that opportunity. Gosh. And saying our truth would have been uh, a de- uh, playing the genie. You want you want him to do the genie? He'll grant all your wishes. All you have to do is say, "What's up?" <laughs> also, uh, Charlie Caruso actually freaking w- uh, could see Jimmy, little Jimmy, and even help Tar Truth put him on the stable, um, on the chair. I'm like, huh? She sees little Jimmy now. Aye. Y'all have anything to mention, Raw Talk, or did I say everything? Yeah, you got it right, but one of them is, I don't know why, every Buddy Murphy is hanging out with Dominic's sister, Aaliyah, that's number one. And number two, Mandy and Dan Brooke, what's the name, it's a team, 
Because even though Mandy's still pissed about that dirty bastard, the Miz, trading her the Monday Night Raw just to piss off Otis. And number three, can't blame himself about leaving for bragging about his with me over the hurt business. So that's how Monday Night Raw came to a conclusion. Uh huh. What's that said? Y'all ready to end this, boys? Okay, so first off, we got to mention a shout out to our fellow brethren of the Heavens Monsters podcast. A shout out to Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, and Andre Mitchell. A link to their YouTube channels will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And remaining shout out to T Money, who just left, Chris Petrie, as well as Renee, Farrell, and Delvin. Let's end it, boys. Like this video, give it a thumbs up. You didn't give it a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button, like the content, hit that notification bell for the next Heavens Monsters podcast. I'm Serge. That was T Money. This is Chris. And this is Mike Henry. Tell him what's up, Mikey. And that's the bottom line, because Heavens Monsters podcast, who said so? And what's the next episode of the Heavens Monsters podcast? I gotta see if we can do. If we're available tomorrow on Thursday, we might pull a previous week of AEW with hopefully Xavier. If not, then we'll do um, TNA. That or Friday. We'll uh, we'll have to wait. Okay. Yeah, because you didn't do it yesterday. You were too busy. Yeah, I was. All right, then. Bye, everybody. So. Well, good night.